So how do you weld two pieces of sheet metal together? Well, I like to use these little butt clamps. These little clamps here, um, this one came from Harbor Freight. You get a set of like eight for like eight bucks or something, super cheap. And uh, they got a little block and the block goes behind. You slide that in and you begin to just kind of crank it down. And as you do, it brings those two pieces of metal together. It leaves you a gap so that when you MIG weld, it fills in that gap. Really, really works well. Uh, if you've been following these videos for a while, you know this is the welding truck that I had started um, through the whole pandemic has been kind of on hold, but this is the tailgate portion. And so I need to bring this curve part together, weld this, cut it right here. This is where the tailgate portion will start here. Um, this curve and this angle matches the fender. And so hopefully I've got this real contiguous flow when it's all done and it looks really nice and the butt clamp will help me. So if you've got to do something like this, you might want to try it out. It's not a huge expense. Um, it will allow you to tack in between and allows it to cool. You can use compressed air to help you with that. And it slows things down so you don't get any warpage. You get proper gap, proper alignment. I really, really like them. You know, there's a lot of application to this right here today. Um, there's a lot of talk about unity. And that's, that's really what I'm looking for here. Uh, unity, a contiguous kind of a flow. And I want to be smart the way I do it. But when you look at how the world is trying to achieve unity, it's by forcing things. These little clamps don't force anything. These little clamps real gently bring alignment as each one works together. There's, there really is a cooperative effort with these. So when this whole pandemic started, there were a lot of Christians that went to Romans 13. And Romans 13 talks about uh, the, obeying those higher powers, those, those authorities that are over you. But today we're going to start in verse 8. And we're going to be looking at how real unity comes. And it comes, no surprise, by love. Let's take a look. In verse 8 it says, Owe no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Well, this is rather interesting. That Paul here is saying that the answer to man's problem is love, and it ties back to the law. This is the very law that we find that our country has been trying to get rid of for so long. So let's take a look at it. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Paul now is referencing the Old Testament law, and he's tying it in with what Jesus told his followers. This is really the answer. Jesus sums up the whole law. Love the Lord God your heart with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Folks, if this was done, we wouldn't have the issues that we have. I mean, you, you think, think about this. Adultery? Well, that is wanting someone else's wife, your neighbor. Killing? Murder? Yeah, that causes problems. False witness? Mmm. Coveting? Yeah. These are all problems that we have today. What if we just demonstrated love towards other people? We preferred other people over ourselves. We wouldn't have these issues. Let's go on. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus said he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And how did he fulfill it? He fulfilled it through love. Then he goes on from 11 to 14 and talks about how, 
time is really short. And that we don't have a lot of time to put this off. He says in verse 11, our salvation is nearer than when we believed. I know that I don't need to tell you that things are rough. I know I don't need to tell you that people know that the end is near. If you know that the end is near, what do you think you ought to be doing? It's time to wake up, is what scripture says. It's time to get up, clean up, and go out and do what the Lord would have you to do. Do you realize that when I love, when I live the truth, I'm like one of these little clamps. And when I'm put in place, initially it's just kind of some fitment. And so I'm stuck in there, a little block is in there, and then begin things begin to happen. So when I begin to demonstrate love, when I live by the truth and I keep doing it, what happens is I will literally draw my neighbor to me. The Lord will bring things together. Amos says, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? And yet we've got people today say, yeah, we just all need to be unified. That's not going to happen. You can't force people to be unified. They're going to try it. It's not going to work out well. You know that. But when the Lord comes in and completely changes someone's heart, that alignment can come. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind? That's the first step. That's the first step. Because oftentimes what happens is we love ourselves more than we love God. And when we do that, then we love ourselves more than we love our neighbor. And everything else is just talk. Don't you agree we've had enough talk? This is what uh, Romans 13 talks about. He's getting down to action. Getting down to action. And um, letting our walk be our talk. May God bless you. Thank you so much for watching and sharing these. We'll talk to you later.